Relieving oneself can be one of life's great pleasures. Or it can be. Hell. A man must do more than simply urinate. He must conform to certain unspoken rules. Rules governing the way men interact in this unique social situation. You know? yeah. The urinal, by its very nature, exposes men's vulnerability. In order to stem this vulnerability, men silently agree to reiterate the myths of macho. Oh. Thereby, solidarity amongst men is strengthened. The trough, as we lovingly call it, is a galvanizing force to men everywhere. Of course, if you're not a real man, can always run away. If there's one person at the top, it doesn't make any difference uh, the way I feel. You can just, you're always walking to the toilet anyway out of it. Go to the toilet because you need your privacy. But sometimes I don't use them because I find them very confronting. If there's a big crowd there, I'd, if there's a cubicle there, I'd go to the cubicle before I go to line up. I think you have to remember that in most non-Western cultures, people defecate or urinate mostly in private. So that the anxiety that we have when we go to the public toilets is in part related to this notion of invasion of space. And we should remember too that it's only in Western cultures that we've actually institutionalized and communalized the notion of going to the toilet. Well, why should we be so uptight in Western society about urinating and defecating in the first place? Well, I think it has to do with the fact that Urine and excreta have historically, throughout the ages and throughout the cultures, been used for sorcery and witchcraft. But these are dangerous, toxic substances. Sir Lawrence, has that got anything to do with the scatological language we have to do with that urination and defecation? Well, I think it does, because most of the language of swearing and insult is based on terms that have to do with defecation, urination, and sexual intercourse. And we use the term piss, for example, in the phrase a piss artist, pissing against the wind. They all have these negative connotations. In 1976, a group of researchers from the University of Southern Illinois studied 327 trough users over a 26-day period. They were using those little uh, individual troughs, the ceramic ones. They found that there were only two guys who stood next to one that was occupied. The 
Sometimes it's pretty easy to hide away discreetly in the corner. At other times, it's virtually impossible. Either way, if you're standing there with company, you're all on display. Where do you look? When I'm at the chop, I sort of like to uh, look straight ahead. I think there's a sort of, maybe a fear of, I'm not quite sure how you put it, but I don't know. Don't like to be caught looking, if you know what I mean. So you make maybe a conscious effort to stare straight ahead, or maybe, I don't know, you tilt your head up to the top, or you sort of, maybe just look at your toes and sort of watch it. Um, I don't look down, you know, I don't look down. Either up or down, but I certainly don't look at each other. No, a lot of people look down, down at their feet, I think. <laughs> they don't look sideways, I don't think. Straight at the wall in front of them and read what's written on the walls. Is there a form of entertainment? Um, and the levity, I think, takes some of the strain out of actually being there exposing yourself. Well done. Yeah, next time, Lawrence. <laughs> what can you do? Look at yourself. You can look at a little pink antiseptic crystal at the bottom of the trough. Some places have been um, generous enough to provide reading material at eye level. Yes, and we've found that uh, when people come into the urinal here to help them, to relax, we just put up some newspapers here to take their mind off uh, any problems of the day that's uh, weighing them down, and of course that helps them get through the day. Mostly you just look blankly at the wall. In his book, Behaviour in Public Places, sociologist Irving Goffman describes the concept of civil inattention. That's when you acknowledge the presence of a stranger with a roll of the eyes, a grunt or a quick g'day, and quickly ignore them so as to not send confusing messages. But... When a few persons find themselves in a small space, civil inattention is hard to maintain tactfully. To not stare requires looking very pointedly in other directions, which may make the whole issue more a matter of consciousness than it was meant to be. Well, in a big room, coming to the urinal is not really a social event, because guys will generally stand far enough away from each other so that they don't have to acknowledge each other. But in a small room, especially in a pub, uh, if there's one other guy there, especially if he's drunk, he can be pretty sure that he's going to talk to you. The heightened intimacy of two men alone at a urinal can be terrifying. The situation becomes even more tense if one of the men suffers from what doctors call micturation impairment. G'day, Pete. G'day. So, what is micturation impairment? Well, most of the mechanisms that control the bladder are designed to stop us from passing urine. It's to keep us socially acceptable. Now, for the bladder to empty, those mechanisms have to be turned off. If there's stress or anxiety, that doesn't happen well, and so micturation impairment results. Oh, I see. And is this uh, an uncommon sort of thing? Yeah, very common. <laughs> Never had any trouble. In 1976, Oklahoma State University found in a study that when men urinated close to others, they consistently took longer to get started and lasted a shorter period of time. The results were published in an article called Personal space invasions in the lavatory. Job. Stand there, door to have yeah. a go, and yeah. nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> then you walk out and you go, oh, I better go back in again. <laughs> I'm a nervous peer. <laughs> in a crowd. Yeah, on the odd occasion, but that could also be because I was very drunk as well. Sometimes I get a bit of stage fright, but when the curtains open, it's always out. Right? When it would be confronting, or when it what wouldn't happen, is if somebody was behind me and you know standing there and just going, come on. Men are competitive. They're also concerned with their sexual virility. Standing exposed and having your equipment let you down is a severe blow to the ego. And it's a problem that seems to escalate the more you worry about it. 
Or so on. But it's not over yet. It's all very well you've got started. But now all you want to do is stop. Not for him to stop. Oh well, there's nothing else to do now, except for conversation. Basically the, the Trump guys will talk about, they'll just talk about women, they'll talk about sport, they'll talk about the band, they'll talk about, geez, I sunk a few. They'll talk about that, and they, it's like you've got to say something to them, and usually you just go, oh, yeah. There's a cheap disco, any nightclubs around, around town. This pub's changing, isn't it? It wasn't like this when I was young. What are you doing, you know, having a couple of beers? Choice, choice. Apart from that, you know, if they're, if they're strangers, you don't talk to them. It's not that difficult coming up with topics of the trough. Remember, stick to cliches, don't be too thoughtful, and remember, you're a man with a capital M. The topic of conversation is normally just a gesture. How are you? I suppose you've got to say something when you're standing next door to, you know, someone's having them, you know, piss beside you. You've just got to say something, so anything. You know, some sleazy nightclubs, you'll normally get some guy in there saying, I don't know, he just got onto a girl or he's hoping to get onto a girl or how many nice looking girls there are out there, or, you know. <laughs> that kind of male bonding kind of conversation type thing, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Vivi, thanks. No one? Two, please. It must be hard for women to understand. It's not something you can, you can explain. I think it would be extremely embarrassing. Very hallowed atmosphere and um, hushed tones and men in suits and a, a wall of steel. As far as urinals are concerned, I think they're pretty ridiculous. <laughs> The trough is something that has to be felt. As men, we avoid it, we, we fear it. It shames us, it makes us dysfunctional. But worst of all, it makes us talk crap. Still, we love it. We love it because it's ours.